Hello, this is Jason P. Wilson Zero in X Force, and this is my pick of the week segment. Now, this is a special edition version uh, because of uh, having so many relatives come down for Thanksgiving. I wasn't able to do uh, as many posts as I normally do. So, uh, starting uh, after this, I will be posting again on a weekly basis my uh, comic poll lists as well as my pick of the weeks. But this particular pick of the week segment will be a pick of the month segment because I'm combining uh, comics from the last uh, four weeks. So this is the equivalent of my last three postings. All of those comics combined into uh, what were my favorites, which are honorable mentions, and which is the, was the best. So uh, with that said, we will start with one of my strongest honorable mentions. There were three comics this month that were really, really close to uh, Pick of the Week slash month. And uh, this was one of them. It's a huge comic. It is a 100-page 50th anniversary 600th issue extravaganza of the world's greatest comic magazine, Fantastic Four, number 600. This is written by Hickman, but the artists vary. And let me pull out the first page to show you this. Now, again, this is a really uh, good way to do this. You have the same writer, but you have five different parts, and each part is handled by a different art, art team, uh, penciler, inkers, and colorists. That is a great idea. You don't They don't do that too often. <clears throat> what makes this work is that the writer is the same. Uh, all, a lot of these other ones, you have different parts, you have different writers doing each one, and it feels that way. It feels like, uh, I don't know, puzzles that don't fit coming together. But because um, the writer is the same, it works perfectly. And even though you have different artists handling each part, you it's flawless. Like they're they're different, but not so different that it takes away or distracts you at all. This is one of the best collaboration books that I've seen done. A great, great book. Now there are a few spoilers here, guys. I will try to go through this very quickly. It is a, a very big book. I won't show all the parts, but I will show uh, a couple of my favorite parts. But there are some spoilers here. Okay. First off, we have stuff that's been going on in FF. Now, I do want to mention this. Um, this is the start of Fantastic Four again, but it seems that we're going to have two books from Fantastic Four. We're going to have FF continuing like it's been, and then we're going to have Fantastic Four. Now, I'm going to probably only be keeping one, similar to what I did with the Captain America. I had two Captain America books. I got them you make cuts, you know, so I had to choose one. That was very difficult. But this might be more difficult because both Fantastic Four and FF are going to be written by Hickman. So I'm thinking that that's going to mean that both books are constantly going to be connected. Uh, so I'm not sure how, that, how that's going to work. I don't believe we've ever had two FF or Fantastic Four books at the same time before. So, especially not by the same writer. So um, I'm not sure how they're going to do this. But when it comes down to it, I don't think I'm going to be keeping both books, though it's very possible it's going to be a must. Like if you read Fantastic Four, you have to read FF. So I'm not sure how that's going to be. I'm hoping that you can read one or the other and get the main story about what's going on but I guess only time will tell but uh, continuing here uh, on this particular comic book we have an invasion we have all the superheroes coming together the uh, the artists like I said all the artists they all did a great job it starts off with some really big action and splash pages and then you find out that it's the dimensional beings, the same ones that uh, killed Johnny Storm. And here, here's one thing. Uh, the way that the F Fantastic Four ended, it was, of course, written by Hickman. And then Hickman came out with FF. And now Hickman is continuing what happens 
in the end of Fantastic Four with the re-beginning of Fantastic Four. So what, what makes this work is that it's the same writer. The person that did this ending storyline is the same person that's doing the beginning storyline of the new uh, re relaunching, if you will, of Fantastic Four. So this next part, you know, that I'm about to show you, again, spoiler alert, it's it's a pretty big deal. Some really cool, uh, really cool stuff with Spider-Man here. I thought Spider-Man was great in this comic book. Um, and then here it is, uh, the return of Johnny Storm. Now, this can be seen as very cheap because, you know, back in the day when Superhero died, it was at least two years before they came back. And then it became a year, a com you know, a, a Superhero was dead for a year and then they were back. Now it seems like the, uh, the new timeline is six months. So it's getting shorter and shorter with the, with the exception, of course, of like the Ultimate Universe Marvel's Ultimate Universe, when a character dies in that universe, they stay dead. That's one of the rules they have about it. The artists and writers can do whatever they want in the Ultimate uh, Universe of Marvel, but when they kill a character, they stay dead. But of course, we know in the main Marvel Universe, that does not happen. When a character dies, especially a hero, they're going to come back, and now it seems to be sooner than ever. But what makes this work for this particular storyline is because the person that killed off Johnny Storm, Hickman, he's the person that brought him back. So this was always the plan. Uh, I don't know if he planned it only to be uh, six months, but I mean, I don't know exactly how long it's been, but I don't. I know it hasn't been a year yet. It's been like six months or seven months. But he was a person that had this plan from the beginning. So that's why it works. It doesn't feel cheap because this is part of his ongoing storyline, and it was always the plan. So, pretty awesome that um, Spider-Man's right here, and he's the first one to see this. That that was awesome. And then, next up is part two, which is one of my favorite parts, because here is showing the, the ending of Fantastic Four, the way it ended. This, of course, is a different artist switching for part two. You see Johnny Storm, you see the whole force field go up ben's like no no you know all this stuff so it was really cool because this is the way that fantastic four ended and the whole time you're, it was so powerful you're like okay what happened so now we finally get to see what happened to johnny storm so it doesn't feel cheap because they're showing you what happened and it was the plan from the very beginning now again this is huge spoiler alerts but you find out what happened. He went supernova no, nova on everyone. Obviously, it was a, a no-win situation. Uh, and he flames out. And he keeps on going, but they take him. And then you see here, they have captured him. And then, again, there's some pretty startling images here. But... Basically, this is what happened to Johnny Storm. They have these disgusting insect-like things have consumed his body, and they have made him one of them. Uh, it, this is uh, pretty startling uh, imagery, but it really works because you want to know what really happened, and now they're showing you it was a nightmare for Johnny. And... Uh, you know, there's no, uh, nothing nice happened to Johnny Storm. He might not be dead, but he wishes he was. So, uh, this is a really strong comic book. All the parts were good. That was just one of my favorites because I, I, you got to finally see what happened to him. But it's very well written. It's one of the best Fantastic Four comics to come out all year. It's, in my opinion, it is the best. This is the best comic to come out, well, since the ending of Fantastic Four. I am still a little put off about now having two Fantastic Four comics and now having to figure out which one I'm reading. But, you know, you can't complain too much when you have so many good comics like we've been having. 
uh, this year. Um, this is probably the most different of all the artwork. Of all the artwork, this artist has really uh, almost feels out of place than all the other artists. So this was the only one. But still, it was it was a cool story. So yes, with that said, this was a very, very strong, almost pick of the week, but not quite. Oh, excuse me, month. All right, next up is Wolverine the X-Men number two. And this comic book, I really like the first one. And this one's even better. I really like the um, the artwork here. I really like how, how this artist draws uh, Bobby, Iceman. I think that um, for the most part, uh, these character designs are really strong. Um, writing is very good, and I just like I just like the feel of it. You know, it's I just like everything that's going on here. It it's both serious and um, fun at the same time, and you don't really find that in a lot of superhero comics these days, anyway. So yes, uh, more of a great written and illustrated comic book uh, Wolverine and the X-Men is definitely becoming one of my favorite X-Books and a strong recommendation for honorable mention this, this, this month uh, next up is Captain America and Bucky number 624 now uh, I was deciding which of these comics I was going to hold on to either Captain America or Captain America and Bucky both of them are written by the same person but they both had very different feels and they were not connected. So it was definitely a choice to be made. And at first I thought it was going to be the new Captain America book because it was so beautiful to look at. And it was a strong, uh, strongly written and it had like an old school uh, superhero type feel. And that was really the front runner for, for a while. But this was the book that really made me choose this one. Um, one of my favorite things about this particular comic has been the coloring. I've mentioned that quite a few times. But now we get a, we, we get to go to the um, the Soviet years. Now this is when Bucky was captured and brainwashed, uh, and now he is kind of working for uh, the USSR. And uh, one of the best things about this is uh, Black Widow. Black Widow's presence in this book is strong, and she's one of my favorite characters, and she's just written so well. So, this is the first new, the first of, of the second story arc. Again, the same artist team and the same uh, colorist that I, that I love. They're back, and they're continuing where they, where they left off with this great new story arc. Now, here we get to see the Black Widow the way she was originally introduced, which I thought was really cool. This is the way the Black Widow used to be when she was first uh, introduced in in a Captain America comic. So we, we get to see her the way she used to be. I thought that was pretty awesome. And um, then, of course, we go into you know Bucky being brainwashed, his Soviet years and stuff, how he was found, and what happened. Of course, we know this already, but um, it's pretty cool to have it told in this way. Um, I really like that they're really showing the relationship between Bucky and uh, the Black Widow. Uh, some of these um, panels are just breathtaking, absolutely beautiful, and uh, I think their uh, their relationship, the way that it was handled, is one of the strong points in this comic. Uh, the other strong points is just the storytelling. It's just really, really strong. Um, again, this team. Uh, has an old school and, and, and modern feel kind of mixed together with absolutely beautiful coloring. You really don't see this type of coloring anywhere else, or at least I don't. So uh, a very strong comic book and um, definitely one of my favorites. And this, again, this was the comic book that made me decide to keep this one. I just, when I'm reading this, I'm not really thinking that I'm reading uh, I'm just enjoying the story, and that's when I know that a comic book is special. It's when 
you're not thinking about that you're reading a comic book or a story or a book. You're just enjoying it and reading it, and it's just kind of happening. So that that's the way this comic was for me. So yeah, this is a great time to jump on to for those of you who didn't read the first story arc. It's a, a new beginning uh, to a new new timeline. Okay, and next up here is Red Skull Incarnate number five of five. This was one of the best Marvel limited series to come out ever. And it ended on a very strong note. Uh, I loved all the covers. They had a propaganda type feel. Now, of course, this is a story of one of the most evil villains in the Marvel Universe. And you see how he became Red Skull. Uh, you see how he was in the Nazi party and the influences that made him the absolutely evil person he is today. Now, even though this is a completely, of course, fictional story and um, about a comic book villain, it's written so well and it's grounded in, in real hist historical events that sometimes you're almost forgetting, like, wait a minute, this is not real. This is obvious. You're just reading a story. But you have situations uh, that reflect the time of what was going on. And it's handled with um, a maturity. It's like it doesn't, it, it's almost like it doesn't know that it's a superhero book. Like, it's obviously a super villain book, but it doesn't know that it is. It thinks that it's just telling a tale. Um, about a period in history that horrific things happened. And I think it not knowing that it's a, it's, it's a comic book is what makes this story so strong. In fact, uh, whoever picks this up on trade, they're not going to be distracted by all these stupid advertisements that does take away from the seriousness of the book. So this is one of those... Look at all these advertisements. This is one of those comics that definitely... Uh, will be stronger a stronger read uh, when if written uh, read from the first time in trade form uh yes yeah, some really strong images of course uh hitler is in here and you get to see the kind of influences that hitler has and um over the red skull um the stuff that happens in here is uh obviously mature reading but it's it really kind of gives you insights of the human nature and how people can make choices between the right choices to be a good person or the wrong ones to become an evil person. So I thought that was represented uh, very well in this comic book. Uh, again, uh, this was a, a very strong story and a strong recommendation for anyone even slightly interested in uh, the material. A definitely super strong recommendation to pick up on trade. All right, and next up here is Kick-Ass, number two. And this is actually issue number five of Kick-Ass, number two. Now, I've been enjoying it quite a bit, but it, it wasn't having the same feel as I did when I read the first Kick-Ass and I think I mentioned that when I reviewed, uh, sort of reviewed this uh, earlier. But what I didn't mention is that this was actually one of the strongest of of the uh, of of the issues. In fact, the way that this ends uh, was was great. Uh, yeah, I, there's a lot of spoilers here, so I won't even attempt to talk to you about what's been going on. But uh, basically, all the buildup has been happening in past issues is coming uh, into its own and the action is is uh, is exploding off the pages uh, I think this is pretty much where the story is really gonna I think get good um, obviously one of our favorite characters of the kick-ass uh, series is Mindy hit girl and basically what happens is the bad guys piss her off. And uh, this is how it ends. 
And this is why it's an honorable mention for me is because after seeing this panel and reading what she says, I was very excited to see what one of my favorite uh, characters, Hit Girl, is about to do to the bad guys. So this panel alone made this a uh, recommendation for me and one of my uh, honorable mentions for the month. All right. Next up here is Catwoman. Now, Catwoman, number three, like Fantastic Four 600, was very, very close to being my pick of the week slash month. In fact, it was a three-way tie until I reread all three of those comics, and then that told me, you know, which one was my uh, pick of the month. So... This one is very close, just like Fantastic Four was. Catwoman number three was actually the best in the series so far. All the stuff that happened in the last two really is coming and turning into quite a enjoyable story arc. I thought it started off strong with number one. I thought number two was good too, but number three just is is a fantastic comic. Um, this particular comic book is, of course, Selena Kyle is written in a way that we really haven't seen her before. Uh, I think that um, Winnick is doing a fantastic job. I've said that many times. I really like Batwing too, but this is such a strong comic book that it won out to be in my saver over uh, Winnick's other, other uh, comic book, Batwing. So, um, yes, this was great to see, seeing Selena Kyle just let loose her anger and just show what she can do. Uh, the stuff that happened, you know, this is, of course, this is a mature read. Uh, I think that's pretty obvious. I've stated that many times before. There are a few spoilers in here, but not too much. I, uh... I not only liked how they're handling Selena and how what a strong character she is, but I really like that they're not shying away from her relationship with Batman. You really get to see the type of relationship that they, they, they do have, and they both share so many similarities in pain, the pain that drives them. At the same time, uh, Selena really embraces her emotions, uh, where uh, Bruce completely subdues them like he removes her emotions completely from his persona where um where selena embraces her emotions and just explodes with emotion so seeing these two characters they're so similar at the same time so opposite uh it's it's just really it really shows what a well-written uh, comic book can do with great characters and yeah, this, these panels alone just made me know that this is going to be one of my honorable mentions and a strong contender for pick of the week. Um, I, can't, I can't recommend Catwoman uh, enough to any, anyone who, who wants to read a really good comic book about a great uh, superhero. But my pick of the week is Wonder Woman. Number three. Now, just like a lot of DCs, and I've been saying this a lot, um, Wonder Woman is basically getting better with every issue. And it was super strong out of the gate. I mean, it was like number one was great, number two is even better, and number three is just fantastic. And as strong as, as Catwoman was, and that was probably the closest one to beating uh, Wonder Woman out, just, I, it could be because I've been reading Wonder Woman for a long time now. And every time I read Wonder Woman, I'm always wanting, like, I'll read her comic, and I'll think, well, I like this, but I don't necessarily like this. And I like this, but man, they really need to do something about that. Or, you know what, uh, this is really cool, but now I probably have jinxed, jinxed myself now 
but I have no buts with with this new uh, imagining of Wonder Woman. The relaunching of Wonder Woman is finally Wonder Woman done in a way that is extremely compelling. You enjoy the artwork. It's different artwork, but it has such a unique flavor that you feel like you're, you're reading something special. Again, the writer is handling Wonder Woman in a way where they're not playing her like a joke. They're taking her seriously. They write her like a complete badass. At the same time, they get who she is. So they are not changing who the character is to people who have always read this character, but they're embracing the best parts of her and they're really showing who she's always been. They're just doing her right. They're taking her seriously. They're not going campy. They're, at this story arc anyway, they're really staying strong into, um, you know, the mythology of her, where she comes from, um, the relationship she has out of the DCU. This is really, uh, this first story arc anyway, is really all about her and the relationship she has within um, her uh, family and stuff. So all this is great. And for Wonder Woman, that really works too, because for the longest time, she was absolutely removed from the world, you know, on, on the Paradise Island. And, and so this type of story really works very well. Um, again, some people weren't sure about the artist, but I am telling you, uh, I was not sure at first either. But the writing was really strong, and I did think the artist uh, did a good job. But I was like, well, it was so different that I wasn't sure what to think about it. Then I I read the second issue, and that second issue just really made me love this artist and thinking that not only is this a great artist, but it's the only artist I want working on Wonder Woman. I mean, the way that they handle the panels, uh, it's just everything about it. Everything about it, uh, it just works. So I have to say that this is absolutely uh, a great uh, comic and sh for sure uh, my pick of the week slash month. Uh, and with that said, uh, those are my picks of the week slash month. And I will be getting back to a weekly posting of pick of the weeks. And I'd like to hear from you guys, see which of these comics uh, you guys have read what your favorites are, and uh, I would like you guys to start telling me what your pick of the weeks are, so I can maybe, if not in my poll list, maybe check them out. And with that said, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.